Everybody sent in many awesome, awesome questions, but unfortunately I was sent the best of, so 10 of your questions that you, you sent me, I will be answering today. All right, are you ready, Christy? Yes. Hey, Christy, you're a perfect Vendla. Your mama who bore me is my favorite of all the Vendlas, so keep, so keep being brilliant. What was, your, um, what was your audition process like for Spring Awakening? In brackets, audition song, how long? Mm -hmm. Well, um, I kind of lived the fairy tale experience because I went to college for four years and we have this thing called a showcase where you go to New York and you audition for casting directors and agents in New York City and I sang Mama Who Bore Me for my showcase and um, Carrie Gardner who is one of the casting directors on Spring Awakening called me in the next day and I actually sang Joni Mitchell River for my initial audition and then I went into the second audition, which is for the entire creative team, which was like Michael and Kim Grigsby and all the people that are involved with the show. And I sang Whispering and randomly blew wind because I think they weren't sure where they were going to place me. Cool. All right. Question two. Keely, Kevin, and Anonymous asked. Hello. When approaching the role of Vendla, did you take your own approach completely? Or did Michael Mayer want her to stay familiar, so, want her to stay similar to the way it was played before? Have directors ever wanted you to approach a role differently than you wanted to? And if so, how did you deal with the situation? Oh, man, that's a loaded question. That's so <laughs> many parts. There's a couple parts. Wait, let's start with the first part. Okay, when approaching the role of Bennett, did you take your own approach I'll completely? to the role. Um, I think, yeah, at first when you go in for the audition, you, you do the best you can in, in your own thoughts of what, what the character should be. And, and hopefully, the, you know, the director's job is, is to see what you bring to the part. And um, a lot of times when you get cast, there's elements of what you do that, that are what he wants. And then when I really started working with him, we would talk a lot about the period and about, you know, how I should approach each scene to make it age appropriate because I'm a little bit older than Venla, so to keep it a little more naive. And um, I think for the most part, you don't think about what the other characters, uh, the, the other actresses who have played the part before are doing. You, you, you think about, you know, your own personal approach to it and, and you just listen to the director and what he wants and hopefully t the two of you will marry in the middle. Now what are the other parts? Right. <laughs> Part two of question two. Um, he said, or did Michael Mayer want her to stay similar to the way it was played before, which he sort of answered. Have directors yeah. ever wanted you to approach a role differently than you wanted to? Um, and if so, how did you deal with that situation? Yeah. That, that is that is a struggle, but I think in the most um, when when situations like that occur, where a director wants you to do something that that isn't what you would naturally do, uh, first off, I, what I always do is I try it. You always try, try, try to do what the director says and to get in his frame of mind, and that that is our job as actors to you know uh, be um, to be able to execute what the director wants. But in the very this has hardly ever happened to me, but in the event that you are incapable of, of being able to execute something, you would go back to the director and talk to him about it and maybe find a result that would, that would lead you guys um, to meet in the middle somehow. And which is kind of like a little bit similar to the last question, but the last part of the first question. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's yeah. what I would do. Good answer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Joe Ellen, Marissa Hope, uh, Anna and Anonymous said. Hey guys, thank you for writing in. <laughs> How hard was it to do the nude scene when you first started this tour? And has it gotten easier to do? Definitely gotten I want to hear this do. answer. I know you do. I'm really <laughs> excited for this one. Well, actually, I was um, a bit nervous in the beginning. Just honestly, the very first time I had done it because I had never um, experienced something like that before and revealing yourself in front of thousands of people a night um, can seem a little bit scary at first, but what I found was when you're so in character and you're, and you're in it so passionately with another actor, I, you become Venla and you become the, I became the character, so it wasn't weird or awkward in any way. Um, in fact, with the lights on you, you can't even see anyone in the audience. And, and with us being on a platform, um, you, there's really not, no one else you can see but your acting partner. And, and luckily, Jake is a very incredible actor, and working with wow. him. Wow. 
has been such a pleasure and joy. And I, 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 I don't have never taken out of the moment, especially in that part. Honestly, all the milk cures I've ever worked with have made me feel so comfortable doing anything on stage. Which leads us to our next question. <laughs> Uh, question four, uh, Anna from Poland, oh. and oh. Anonymous, <laughs> said, How do you feel about performing with different Melchiors? You've had to work with Kyle Ryabko, Matt Doyle, Jay Gabstein, plus the <laughs> understudies. Matt Shingledecker. And, well. yes, of course, is it a different experience each time? Uh, yeah, I mean, every Melchior definitely brings their own energy, but... Every Melchior I've worked with has been a great actor and has completely committed to their choices. So all I have to do is listen to them and react in, you know, whatever they're giving me, just react back. So it, it's never been difficult. It's definitely been a different energy with each one, but a special uniqueness that is uh, that has only enhanced the show as I've gone along. So I've, I'm very lucky to have gotten to work with the talent that I have. I, I'm not exactly sure what every <laughs> That's a good, would be. that's a politically good <laughs> answer. <laughs> yeah, but I know it sounds politically correct, but it's really my true, truthful answer. I really love, have loved working with every, every milk here. Mm. Question five, Jordan Especially from, you. oh, thank you, back <laughs> at you. Okay, Jordan from Cincinnati and Celeste said, what is the coolest gift slash thing a fan has ever given slash done for you at the stage door? Oh. Gosh, there are so many incredible things. You're pretty popular. I know, and, and and every everything I do get, every picture, every you know little memento, I take home and I have like in my room. I think I'm gonna make a big scrapbook of it eventually one day <laughs> and show cool. it to all my friends because I think it is the most. I mean, it is the sweetest thing that people take the time to do those things um, for us, and they pay the money to come out to see the show week after week and city after city. So I'm. I'm just so humbled by it and so happy. Specifically, there are a few memorable things I've gotten. Um, I have these group of awesome friends, these girls who come to see the show and they live in Cincinnati and they all travel from city to city and bring me Grater's ice cream, which is like my favorite ice cream, but you can only get it in Cincinnati and like parts of Kentucky and bits of places in the Midwest. So um, these girls would just like they come to places that Grater's ice cream is unheard of, like Chicago, and bring me bulks of Grater's ice cream to eat. And it just that was just like the sweetest. And you could tell it took them, it was obviously like a difficult feat to do, being that it's, it needs to be refrigerated and then like packing it in ice and everything. Yeah, so, that's a whole, that's a yeah, whole. Yeah, it was a whole experience. Exper like, like deal, yeah. getting it to you. Yeah, <laughs> wow. But, um, but it was really sweet. That was one thing that I'll never forget. Um, gotten a lot of great presents, necklaces, um, artwork. I love it when people draw artwork. I, this one girl, um, I don't know how she did it. It was like a wax or something on a piece of paper and she etched a picture of me as Venla into it and gave it to me and that was incredible. Um, wow. Just paintings, posters. I've gotten a lot of really awesome things and I want to thank all of you out there for, for all your support and um, for making me feel loved. She's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> all right end of part one end of part one thank you guys thank you for all your questions and questions and congratulations to all the people who whose questions got picked okay see you in a bit see you in a bit